maybe the Avs are just bad. Maybe these last two games are who the Avs really are, and they're going nowhere. I don't particularly believe that, but certainly in the moment, it doesn't feel any good. Avs lose to the Dallas Stars 7-4. I don't think it's any secret what's going on right now with Colorado. They're playing some terrible hockey. They look like a team who is unengaged and has accepted their fate as a team that is not going to win the Central Division. Certainly, this loss has almost guaranteed that. That isn't to say they don't do good things. Scoring the first goal of this game is fun, even if it is a bit of a fluky one. It's something they've been doing better lately. Unfortunately, scoring the first goal has not meant much for this team, as they have consistently given back not one, but two goals in the first period. Repeated egregious lapses in defensive coverage have seen this team just fall apart at times. Far too often in this game and over the past handful of games, it just feels like the Avs are chasing the play in the defensive zone. And while that is absolutely concerning, do you really expect this to continue come playoff time? If you're asking me, I certainly expect at least the Makars and Taves of the world to lock in a whole lot more defensively than they have over the last couple of weeks. Certainly we know they are capable of more. Someone like Josh Manson, who made the mistake on that first goal, he makes those sometimes. You live with that. He's also capable of playing extremely good heavy defense, so he'll be fine too. So the Avs defense needs to be better, but it's not this overarching massive concern that I have across the whole season. Honestly, the same is true of the Avs special teams, which gets them back to tied in this game in the second period. A typical Avs nice seam pass to get that goal to go. You may have noticed I'm not breaking down these goals in depth because I don't think there's any need to. Almost all of these goals are extremely straightforward in how they happen. And this brings us to the problem that lost the Avs the game, their penalty kill. And why I'm not scrutinizing this penalty kill is because since the trade deadline, their PK had been rocking at a 95% effective clip. So it had been unbelievably good up to this point. Now, obviously, going 0 for 3 on your PK is terrible in this game. Has to be better. But they've been so good for so long, I'm willing to forgive the penalty kill one terrible game. With that being said, giving up a rush goal on the PK is particularly bad. Please do not continue to do that. You follow that up with a good chance, but a shot that is not particularly special and likely needs to be stopped. And then you get a third one, which is just a great tip. That one happens. I don't have a whole lot of problem with that. And the game was essentially over. From there, there was really not much more to say about this one. The Avs, as they always do, fight to get back into the game. At the very least, you can never count this team out of games offensively. And it is nice to see their depth scoring get on the goal sheet a little bit here. Yes, the overarching picture is still ugly, but if you're looking for those silver linings, depth goals could come up huge for the Avs in the playoffs if they can get that part of their lineup rolling. A multi-point night for Brandon Duhame, Russ Colton also getting an assist. The Avs are even able to bring it within one, as Jonathan Druin continues to play unbelievably well for the Avs. He's kind of their secret weapon right now, if he can keep this up into the playoff series in round one. But the Avs ultimately, for the second game in a row, get six dropped on their head. Seven, if you include the empty netter, and it's just impossible to win hockey games that way. There is no two ways around it. If the Avs' defense plays like they have in the last couple of games in the playoffs, they're going to get owned. You just understand that. You have to believe that their defense can play better. You've seen it play better. You've seen it play better for significant stretches of this season, even. I feel like that's a realistic expectation. Where the hopium comes in is in net. And I'm not saying Georgiev played the worst game of his life in this game. Obviously, the defense in front of him was terrible, but he wasn't able to bail that defense out for what feels like the umpteenth time this season. Where I have faith that the Evs defense will play better come playoff time, I don't know if I have that faith in their goaltending. Georgiev is certainly capable of it. We've seen him in short stints play extremely well, but over long stretches, this is where it tends to end up. Games where he's letting in far too many goals. While the Evs are a very good team this year, they are not as good as their 2022 team was. They cannot simply outscore weak goaltending throughout an entire playoff run. They're going to need a goalie to be able to win them some games. And it could happen. Georgiev could get hot for the entire playoffs. Or he could give up six in four straight games and the Avs are out. I don't know which one to expect.